Welcome to DXB Today. Tonight is all about humanity in action. We explore the extraordinary efforts of our everyday heroes, people who have dedicated their lives and careers towards helping those in need. We journey into the heart of humanitarianism where compassion meets action. Let's find out what else is coming up on the show. Lane heads down to the only non-profit humanitarian free zone authority to get insight into the impactful initiatives they're creating for the region. And talented singer Greg Pearson joins us in the studio to close the night. So guys, humanitarian efforts, what do you think? There's a lot happening. You know, the UAE has always been established as a humanitarian aid country. It's, it's been helping so many countries from all around the world. And it also goes in line with the vision of the late Sheikh Zayed Allah Yerhama. Uh, so yeah, there's so many things happening. You know, Dubai is not just a hub for commerce and tourism, but it is a beacon of hope for countless people and countries across the globe. Because I mean, our motto here is that humanity transcends bound, uh, borders and transforms yeah. lives. I was looking at some figures online. So in 2022 alone, the total UAE funding towards international aid amounted to nearly 12 point six seven billion dirhams yes. which is almost about uh, 3.45 billion dollars but of course uh, humanitarian action doesn't necessarily need to be just government or large corporations it can start from home you know it could be towards our domestic workers our drivers gardeners or you know it, it doesn't need to be larger than life every single time it could start with a small gesture correct exactly it's with the families like i remember for my house, we do a lot of humanitarian efforts, either go out and about to the neighborhoods uh, with food during Ramadan or even, yes. you know, during Eid. And also like clothing, you can even donate that and more. And it all starts from your household and then expands to your community. Mm -hmm. So before we delve more into it, let's find out who our guest co-host is for today. Hello, I'm Claire Dalton. I'm the head of the International Committee of the Red Cross here in the UAE. And I can't wait to have this conversation about humanitarian values and giving. Claire will join us right here in a bit. But first, Lane went down to Dubai Humanitarian, the largest humanitarian hub in the world, with more than 150,000 square meters of warehouse and offices. Let's take a look. Welcome to Dubai Humanitarian, the largest humanitarian hub in the world. This facility was founded in 2003 by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President and the Prime Minister of the UAE and the ruler of Dubai. This is a hub for helping people help people. It comprises of over 80 members and this was a part of the merger through Dubai Aid City and Dubai Humanitarian City. So let's find out a little bit more. Imagine it's a pleasure to meet you. So Imagine, tell me more about how this area and Dubai Humanitarian has helped your organization. Uh, well, we started um, two decades ago, exactly in 2002. We started with a small office uh, benefiting from the location of the Dubai and what it offers also in terms of uh, logistics uh, facilities. Um, but then, since then, we started to expand. Uh, today, we have in Dubai here one of the largest hubs, supply chain hubs that in, based in Dubai here, for the service of all our operations around the world. Uh, the support that we receive from the government through the Dubai Humanitarians, we have expanded our, our, our reach. And what would you say is your expansion plans for the future for the organization? Benefiting from our presence here, and from the expansion that already happened in the past two decades and also benefiting from the geographic location, the logistics setup and facilities here, the efficiency of response to our operations, then uh, guided us also that to expand here. We are proud to be one of the founding members of the Dubai Humanitarians, formerly known as the the International Humanitarian City. The Dubai Humanitarian plays an important enabling role that enables our response faster and effectively. UAE has contributed over a billion dollars to our operations in different parts. Incredible. So Ali, this is a wonderful location, a great destination. So tell me how this place is actually helping your organization flourish. 
So you're standing today in uh, one of the five uh, depots that uh, the UNHRD, the United Nations Humanitarian Response Depot Network, manages uh, on behalf of the humanitarian community. The organization that manages the UNHRD is the World Food Program, and you might know of the WFP because of its efforts into, uh, into food security and, and how we are the food agency of the United Nations. So right here in Dubai, which is, as I said, one of the five locations that we, that we manage, you're standing in the largest of the, of the five hubs. So all this emergency community comes together around UNHRD to better respond to emergencies in a coordinated and more effective manner. In the first six months alone of 2024, we reached over 46 countries on behalf of uh, about, 30, about 30 partners. And Dubai Humanitarian is our counterpart in this, in this relationship. Uh, they have been giving us, uh, at uh, no cost, the usage of these facilities, but as of uh, last year, they're also contributing to the running costs of the facility themselves, so including staff and, uh, and, uh, and maintenance. Uh, they have been uh, uh, a relentless partner so far uh, for the World Food Programme and the humanitarian community at large. And it also helps with sustainability as well. It does, indeed. <laughs> Thank you. And there you have it, the UAE with their continuous efforts for humanitarian aid around the world. Thank you, Lane, for that report and shedding some light on some of the initiatives that the UAE is heavily involved in. Now, our co-host today is a thought leader, bringing extensive experience in information relations and crisis management to her role as the head of delegation to the UAE at the International Committee of the Red Cross. Please welcome to DXB today, Claire Dalton. Claire, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Thank you so much for having me. First of all, thank you for all your remarkable efforts towards helping people, especially in times like this. I think we need it more than ever. Now, the Red Cross often talks about humanity shining through acts of kindness. Can you share with us some recent examples where the UAE or the region has been involved? Well, I think, as you say, it can seem overwhelming when you look at the humanitarian needs today. However, it is possible to make a difference, even through quite small actions. Mm -hmm. And so the Red Cross and Red Crescent has about 16 million volunteers around the world. And so at any moment, they're doing all different kinds of things, from the very small to the much bigger. And so I think that we see this all the time in a simple act of somebody maybe helping a neighbour, or perhaps they're doing a huge distribution of aid. But actually, those two things can really make a difference. And how do you think the UAE is playing a role with you guys, the Red Cross or the Red Crescent, in order to cater for all the humanitarian aid that is needed worldwide? Well, as you saw, I think in the video, of course, the UAE is very, very generous in terms of giving aid, but also in supporting humanitarian efforts. Yes. And so, I mean, we have the Red Cross and Red Crescent. It's like a family. So there's the UAE Red Crescent, which yeah. is working nationally and internationally. And we work also with them too, but they work with other Red Cross and Red Crescent societies around the world too. So together, I think we can have a much bigger impact. True, yeah. And that's really interesting because there's a huge network of Red Cross and Crescent all over the world. So can you share with us some stories about how a small, you know, um, a small moment of kindness helped change someone's life? I think a good example is something the Red Cross and Red Crescent does globally is help people find family members. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've gone missing because there was a war or maybe there was a disaster. And it's through the network of volunteers that this is done. So perhaps somebody fled a conflict in a country and they came, let's say they came to UAE or they went to Europe. Maybe they lost contact with their family and through the Red Cross Red Crescent network, there is a way to try and find family members and put people back in contact. And that of course is amazing. I've worked in places where we've managed to find family members who perhaps haven't seen each other for 30 years. Wow. I mean, imagine that. Mm. But the story of that is very simple. Sometimes it's somebody writing a Red Cross message. You know, we think today with all this technology, you can pick up the phone or, you know, there's a way to find people. But actually, because of disasters or war, it might not be so easy. Maybe the telephones don't work properly. So, yes, volunteers together across the world are making this possible. 
Honestly, reuniting displaced family members must be such a heartwarming experience. I mean, we here in the UAE believe in charity. We believe in giving back. I mean, it is a huge part of what the country, the government and us, the people believe in. But I feel like oftentimes we take the, the lazy route where it's easy to send a donation somewhere. Uh, what takes real effort and what really, I guess, where our humanity really shines through is when we can physically be there uh, to perform an act of kindness, a selfless act for someone else. Do you think we do enough of that here in the region? I mean, you can always do more, but I think you're so right. You know, again, just through small things, you can make a huge difference. And I've seen in the UAE, I haven't been here that long, I've been here three years, but you know, like you were saying in the beginning, you see people, very often helping each other in kind ways, whether that's offering water to someone when it's very hot or during Ramadan. And I think if people all have that attitude, you know, trying to help each other be kind, it kind of pays on. And in a sense, that is really important because the idea of humanity can get lost sometimes, yeah. but it's the small things we can all do very easily. Maybe you don't have a lot of money, but you can give time. You know, maybe you don't have a lot of time, but you can offer a cup of coffee to somebody who's not feeling good mm. so i feel there's always ways we all can be part of this bigger humanitarian picture and for anyone that's watching maybe how can they show the support or how can they help you in any way um, maybe to pay forward or maybe be part of the initiatives that you guys have out there well i think again it's a huge question because it depends to what people can offer to me yes. it's not the size or the scale it's the impact yes so I mean again you may be able to give money or time but maybe you can't give those two things but there's something else you can offer some people have a great platform mm -hmm. you know and then you can perhaps help inspire people to be more humanitarian in their daily lives through your platform or perhaps you have a special skill mm -hmm. I've seen that a lot where people offer the Red Cross Red Crescent maybe pro bono work okay. you know I some <coughs> somebody who knows something that we don't they could help us do that but i feel like there are so many ways yeah so, so many different mm. branches as well like if someone cannot do that then they can find a different way yeah. to do it Claire, that brings me to my next question uh, the summer is almost upon mm. us and uh, i'm sure we all have wonderful holidays and things planned uh, when i look at what i have planned this summer it's a lot of chill time i'm going to be in some place where i'm going to be indulging a lot gaining a lot of weight waking <laughs> up at odd hours so if we wanted to stay here in the uae and make a meaningful change what are some of the ways we can get involved in some um, some of the work charity work happening over here well, again, I think there's lots of different ways. Obviously, the, the Red Crescent often have campaigns or drives that people can support. Soon it's going to be Eid and they will have a, a charitable campaign. I think, you know, there are ways sometimes to volunteer for different organizations or charities here. To me, also, it's maybe you become informed. Maybe you spend the time you have to learn more about some of the humanitarian crisis around the world. Um, and maybe you learn to have more empathy for some of these situations. I think. To me, I think people shouldn't feel overwhelmed again about what can I do? Yeah. And, oh, I can only volunteer or if I can't give money, I can't help. No, I think there are so many ways and we all come from many different countries here in the UAE. Maybe there's a Red Cross or Red Crescent back in your, in your home country that you could somehow get involved mm. with. Um, so I would say to me, I think the really important thing is just the small acts you can do every day that help people feel good about them selves and the world they live in. Well, I can't wait to learn more about what different efforts we can contribute for the Red Crescent and for the humanitarian cause. But coming up, we find out one small change everyone can make to make the world a better place with the founder of Thrift for Good right after this. <laughs> 